is about the um, chemical kinetics and uh, what is chemical kinetics? Kinetic for a reaction is study of how fast a reaction can take place. Uh, is determined based on the rate of how fast a product is formed or how fast a reactant is, is consumed. So when we are testing or we are studying the rate for the reaction, we can take one of the reactants or products that is colored, for example, or it can give response to another reagent to generate color. So we know that this reaction has reached to a point that I can now uh, use that for my calculation. I can say it took this long time to reach this point, this color change, okay? Um, so in this reaction, which is iodine clock experiment, it's saying how long does it take for iodine to show color change in presence of starch. So there is a starch iodine complex, which gives like a very deep blue color. And when you are testing, when you are starting each of these reactions, you are going to, to look how long did it take for this reaction to produce enough iodine to react with starch to give that deep blue color. Rate of a reaction, it depends on concentration of the reactants. That's the major factor, concentration of the reactant. If, you, if I use very high concentration of potassium iodate, this reaction is going to go faster because as I increase the, the uh, concentration, the rate is going to increase unless we have one type of reaction that is known as zero order. If it's a zero order, that means the rate of the reaction is independent from the concentration of that reactant. But the, the chemicals or the reaction that we picked here, I picked here, the, the concentration of both reactants affects the rate of the reaction. So if you increase the concentration, of reactant one, the rate is going to increase. If we increase the concentration of reactant two, the rate of the reaction would increase. What does it mean? The rate is like how fast this reaction is taking place. Going from destination A to B, how fast? How fast would you get there? If you're going from point A to point B, the faster you go, less time it would take for you to get there. So if it takes less time for iodine to form, that means this reaction is faster. So the higher the rate, that means the faster the reaction. It produced like quickly. It took less time. Less time it takes, that means faster reaction. We also, that's one thing I want you to know about rate of the reaction. And it can be calculated based on change in concentration of a react product or a reactant, which in this case is the product, over the, the time. Now, for all trials, we will do like five or six different trials. For all of these trials, we are going to say, we gotta have enough iodine to see the, the blue color. So that kind of is, is going to give like consistent or the same concentration for the iodine so that takes the change in concentration of the iodine out of the picture. So we can basically use this, okay? So this is a true uh, kind of equation um, for the rate uh, for this reaction, because we are going to look for the color change and say the color change is going to happen with exact same concentration from one trial to another trial. So since the concentration of iodine is going to change in concentration of the iodine is going to be fixed from one trial to another trial to see the blue color. So we are eliminating that factor and we are just using one over number of seconds to the color change. So we can calculate the rate. Rate law, a general rate law is, is written as rate equals 
This is the rate constant, K value. Concentration of reactant A. So if I have reactant A plus B, that is gives C plus D. And uh, concentration of A to the power of lowercase a, concentration of B to the power of B. This is the general rate law. So if my uh, reactants are potassium iodate, the rate law is going to be K, concentration of iodate and concentration of the sulfurous acid. Potassium doesn't react. Basically, the iodate is the one that is reacting. Well, you could, however, you could use potassium iodate, but we don't want to get confused with the 2K here, K and then K. So iodate ion, and then we have the sulfurous acid. Reactant A, reactant B. The exponents, these are the exponents. What are those exponents? They show the, the order of this rate. What is the order of this reactant in the rate law? What is the order? And what does it mean if x is 1? What does it mean is if x is 0? Okay. If x is 0, it means that it's going to be zero order with respect to compound A or the first reactant. Means that if you raise anything to the any number to the power of zero is going to be equal to one, right? Any number to the raised to the power of zero is going to be equal to one. So if you double the concentration, because it's going to be raised to the power of zero, is not going to affect the rate of the reaction. So if the x equals zero, that means independent from concentration of A, is not going to, change in concentration will not affect change in rate. What does it mean if it's x equals one? Because it's exponent. If it's exponent, if x is one, so two to the power of two, one equals two. That means if you double the concentration, double the concentration of the reactant, the rate is going to be doubled. So it's the one to one ratio. You double the concentration, the rate is going to be doubled. If you triple the concentration, the rate is going to be tripled. So again, the ratio is one to one ratio. What about Y? If Y is one, that means if you double the concentration of H2SO3, sulfurous acid, the rate is going to be doubled. If X is two, what does it mean? If X is two, that means the order of this reaction with respect to concentration of first, L, first reactant is two. That means if you double the concentration, the rate is going to be quadrupled. So if it's second order, that's what it means. The effect is much higher. If you increase the concentration, the effect on the rate is going to be much greater. Oh, <laughs>